Hey, Benjamin Soma here. I'd like to show you how to set up and use the colorizer for Ableton Push and Novation Launchpad. Now, this is the latest version of my colorizer. And if you don't already know, the colorizer helps you set up your own custom color layouts for your grid controller and save them directly to your Ableton Live Set to use later. So um, all we need to do to set up the colorizer to work with our controller is hit the setup button and then follow the instructions to set up place this device in a blank MIDI track and select your controller for each of the following menus so we can list them if necessary but we have our controller here um, our push to input push to output and my push so it says here, see chromatic sequential vertical or user mode. So we need to change our scale to the sequential layout, chromatic, a root of C with the vertical direction. Let's leave the scale mode. And we can double check that we're in the C1 to E flat six octave. And then that's all you need to do. If I were to use user mode, I just hit the user button and then I would have needed, I would need to choose port two for the port on these in and out menus. Port two is for user mode. So now we're all set up. Uh, this edit screen is how you will change the layout itself. Now this will vary depending on which version of the colorizer you have. What we're looking at here is the pro version that lets you save 127 different patched layouts. And what we can do is just drag these numbers or type them in or um, use our push knobs. If we hit that button, we can go through all the different rows. Um, another way we can enter these numbers is by hitting the touch mode. We can actually finger paint, if you will. Uh, depending on how hard I hit these pads, it will change the color right underneath my finger. So now let's uh, store that into the first patch number. We can even actually change the title of this patch and save it along with our uh, layout. And then let's make, let's go into the second preset. And these didn't actually change because this is blank right now, but let's make some changes. And let's store it. And now you can see that when we go back to patch number one, all the lights go back to what we had stored. And then patch number two has that layout there. So yeah, you can uh, delete a patch, delete them all. You can zero out all the numbers. And then as long as you haven't pressed the store button, you can recall it um, back to what you had. Every time you go to a patch, it will recall what you have saved. Um, let's say we like this second one. Let's copy it to patch number one and then paste. And then there you go. It's in both of them. So let's turn that off for now. Uh, finally, I want to show you the advanced section. Um, and here, this is this will affect how the colorizer interacts with your controller. And depending on different situations with different live sets and MIDI going back and forth between your controller, um, you might need to set this differently to work best with your layout, your setup. Um, but usually you might not need to actually press change these at all. And so that's why I've tucked them away into advanced. Um, but anyway, what we have here is the interval refresh. And what that will do is when you turn it on, it will constantly send this color data, if you will, to your controller. So no matter what happens, even if you press pads, it will um, send a, a new refresh of the lights uh, 50 milliseconds later. 
And you can change this interval rate if you want it to happen a little slower. You could just increase how much time in between each refresh. So um, automatically, or, or by default, um, we'll be using automatic refresh. And what that does is whenever the colorizer can tell that you have hit pads, um, it will refresh the lights um, after a delay of 50 milliseconds. And the reason we need that delay is because the push itself has, wants to change the pads to green when you touch it and then um, to whatever it wants when you let go. And so we need to give the push 50 milliseconds of time to do that process, and then we can let the colorizer come in and replace it with the setup that we have saved. And uh, usually this happens within really a blink of an eye. And um, however, you don't need to do this automatic refresh um, if you're in user mode because the pads don't actually change colors when you touch them when you're in user mode on the push. So we can actually turn off automatic refresh and we're okay. So let's set up the colorizer to work with user mode. If you remember, we need to change our port to port two for the user mode. Port two, and we're still here in the push, and we'll need to change our controller to user mode. We've already done that, and the lights have been refreshed, and we can actually clear them out with that button and refresh them. So there you go. That's how you use user mode on the push. So let's go back through. Um, we have here this is a, um, a little setting that will change how many times the clear function happens when you click it. Um, sometimes I find with some controllers, it needs multiple passes of the clearing to happen for all the lights to be grabbed and turned off. Uh, some controllers might not necessarily need that. And so that's why I have this option open for you. And this is the refresh method um, what happens is you are sending MIDI data or really notes, MIDI notes to your controller and in continuous mode, it will send the new notes to, to your controller, even though it hasn't necessarily cleared out the previous ones. And with clean, it will clear out the, the notes that it has currently using to light up the pads and then allow for new note data to come in and relight up the pads. So this process of clearing out and then relighting up can make it flash a little bit, but depending on your controller, that might not necessarily be the case. And you might not, you might actually prefer that setting because well, it's a little cleaner. It actually clears out the MIDI data before relighting up the, the pads. Um, I find that um, when it's in continuous mode, I've had some controllers get a little buggy um, because it's so much MIDI data has been sent to it and it never cleared it out. So anyway, that option is there for you if your controller responds better in that way. Anyway, lastly, the animate button, that is really just for the pro version. What it does is it will automatically page through all the different patches um, and it will go through at the interval rate. So it will wait 50 milliseconds and then go to the next patch, 50 milliseconds, next patch. If you want it to go a little slower, you'll need to increase this interval and then it will advance a little slower. And so when it, when it hits 127, it will cycle back to one again. So you can make a little like GIF for your push, if you will. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, that is how to set up the colorizer and use it for the push. Let me really briefly show you how to set it up with my launch pad here. 
Uh, let's turn off that animation. Okay, all set. Back to the setup menu. We will need to select the port for my launch pad. And the launch pad X, we need the secondary uh, uh, port because we're going to be using the custom mode on our launch pad. So that would be MIDI in 2, LPX MIDI. And again, LPX MIDI, MIDI out 2, LPX MIDI. And let's choose my Mark III Launchpad X. And then it says LPX Custom Send A. So we'll need to go into the third uh, custom mode. And we're already set up here. Um, if you refresh the lights, it will look exactly as you have them programmed. Now, of course, these lights will not be exactly the same as we had it, as the way it looks on the push, um, because each controller has their own color to number ratios or whatever. Um, so, uh, but it works um, on both controllers. And uh, just so you know, if I were to use a Pro, uh, Mark III Pro, we need to go to the 8th custom mode by default. And the Mark II Pro will use just the blank user mode. And uh, uh, just so you notice here, when we open up this setup window for the first time or, or load up the, the device into a, a, a MIDI track for the first time, it will change the monitor to in. And that way it's ready to listen for uh, MIDI data. And if I have selected Launchpad Mark 1 or 2, it's going to choose channel 6 for the output. And that's because the, the old Launchpad Mark 1 and 2, um, the, the different channels would affect different kind of like animation um, lighting effects. So you can actually go through and take a look at these different channels if you have one of those launch pads and see uh, what kind of effects you get out of it. But channel six is default on the one and two and mark three channel one, just like the push. So Anyway, that's all I wanted to say about the colorizer. You can find out more about the colorizer and my other devices for Ableton Live, Max for Live, uh, at benjaminsoma.com. Enjoy.